Hey everyone, it's Jason, and welcome to another video for Storytime Chest. In this video, I'm going to do a brief overview of the Level 2 Strategy Expansion, um, and what comes in that box, as well as Level 3, the Tactics Expansion. Um, now, just to note that it does require the base game, so if you're interested in what Storytime Chest is, check out the base game video I did. Um, I'll put the link in the description. Um... But essentially what this is, is you're going to get, you're going to, the base set is going to have your board, your chest pieces, and it's going to explain how all your pieces move, the basics of the game. Um, then when we hop into level two, we are going to learn some strategies. So if you want to do more than just knowing how to move your pieces forward, this is what you're going to want to pick up. Um, so the core, core of the game is aimed at probably teaching younger kids, um, I would say... I don't even know if elementary students, maybe, um, but how, how to learn the game. Um, and then this can actually be better for, you know, I mean, not say they couldn't learn this stuff as well, but this would be more helpful for even teaching people to have um, maybe the basic knowledge of chess, but they want to learn some extra stuff. So this could be pushed to learn, uh, teach more younger younger kids, make, make, make level kids, adults, some of the more specifics of the game. So we are going to get um, a couple of books in here. We are going to get the strategy storybook. This will be the main core teaching us how to play the game, uh, such as openings, game planning, castling, and pawn promotion. Um, and then we will get the three workbook or the three different extra books. Now, these are additional books for the game, uh, which I will go over a little bit later, but we'll have workbook. Um, of the puzzle book, sorry, the coloring book, and the activity book. So now, um, if you watched my first video, you saw I kind of went over these briefly, um, but I'll go over them again in this video. Um, but yeah, they don't come, the level one books don't come with the set. You have to buy those separately, but you do get the level two ones in this box. Um, but you are required to have the base game, um, because you won't have a chess set. Now, I already own a chess set. Do I still need to buy the base game to be able to play this? Not necessarily. Um, except it's going to reference the uh, cardboard cutout characters and pictures on the board. Or some of the tokens used in the first game. Now you can again use your own representations for these if you'd like. Um, but I think it would make teaching a lot smoother if you just had to add the products that went with it. All right, so for component-wise, we're going to get two brand new queens and two new character cutouts, which are their promoted characters. Um, and so those show on there that say promoted. Um, and if you're familiar with chess and rules, this happens because if a pawn character, such as a little girl, gets across the board to the other side, you can swap them out with any other piece in the game, and they figured... Nine times out of ten, people are going to swap them out with a queen because the queen is the most versatile one because it can move um, any up, up, down, left, right, diagonal, any direction. Uh, so it can hit pretty much anywhere in one turn. So that's what the idea was is they gave you two new extra queens. You had ones to do it. Um, if you need to switch something else out, you just have to swap it out for another piece that's already been eliminated. Uh, but that's all explained in the book. So let's take a look at some of these. I don't want to spend a ton of time going through every single one. Um, but yeah, so it starts off transforming pawns. You get your storybook. Tells you kind of a story about how she turns into a queen. Um, explaining, you know, just that. Extra queen of each color. Um, now this was actually something I thought was very interesting. So they kind of explain how pawn promotion works. And then it asks a quick puzzle. What happens when the pawn takes one more step and reaches the board? Which piece should the pawn transform into? So we just got done saying, Queen is usually the best character. The answer is a knight. 99% of the time, you should transform your pawn into a queen, since the queen is the most powerful piece. However, there are some situations where it's better to opt for a different piece. This puzzle is one of those exceptions, since transforming a pawn into a knight allows the white king to attack the black king and the black queen at the same time. Um, so what they're saying is because if you transform into a queen, the queen can go left, right, up, down, and diagonal, 
any direction, it can't touch either of these pieces. Where if you turn it into a knight, it can make an L shape and it can attack either one of them. Um, so it basically forces them to have to move. If you're a queen, they don't have to move. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting little, like, fun puzzle to start off with. Um, now this one does a lot more stuff like that. Like, the first book went through and did a lot more, um, like, hey, move this guy ten spaces. Do this, do this. This, this does a lot more asking questions. Um, so it's like, hey, can you do this? Let's see if you can do it. And then play a game. Um, and do that stuff. So now we have planning, um... Which talks about using, th you know, it does go back into this thing again, teaching tips. Kids, like, putting your hands under your chin as a thinking cup. Again, I don't know if I, I don't know if a lot of adults being taught this would do that. But it doesn't mean that this should be overlooked. Because um, there are some very good um, teaching lessons in here. Um, so, like, the idea of planning is um, not just grabbing a piece and moving, but actually taking a moment to look back and see what your options are. Um, so, like, what's your plan to do is to get your pawn across the board. Um, that's what your goal is in this. You know, you have two, two kings left in a pawn. Your goal is to get your pawn across the board. Um, and then, you know, it's kind of like, you know, so then the black side should be asking, what, what's the white player's plan? Oh, I can see they're going to try and move that. So, what's my plan? If that pawn's there, my plan is I got to block him up there. So now it's a race to that corner for the two, two pieces, essentially. Um, yeah, so that's kind of neat. So it's just like, start the game master child if they are making a plan. What is your plan is and ask them what they think your plan on a given move is. So it, it's to teach people in here, like whoever's playing, again, it's aimed at kids. But it's to teach them to not just grab a piece and move, grab a piece and move. Actually think about maybe what it is. Um, and maybe try and get an idea of what the other player might do. Now, something like this with three pieces on the board, that's easier to understand. Now, when you're talking full chess game, and someone moves their first pawn two spaces forward, you don't want to probably spend 20 minutes, um, trying to figure it out. Um, here's completing plans, so it just kind of goes through all these different steps, um, of course, now the black player can have a plan. White player can have a different plan. You know, so then you have to kind of, you know, negate your plans. Um, but this has you playing more games of chess after you learn these little things. So it's definitely interesting, guessing and checking, protecting, guarding, you know, protecting your pawn. Sometimes it's a good idea. Um, yeah, so just all these different things. You're showing all the different ways, like, your knight can move. Um, and then it's kind of calling that the kitchen in the middle. So some definitely interesting... Um, interesting new things to learn about. Um, and there's some secret missions that have a little bit more more strategic things. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a fun thing. If you learn how to move all your pieces, this will teach you some different strategies and how to implement some of them. Um, then if we hop in to what our other books are, our puzzle workbook, which again, I think these are really great, because now they're actually going to have you learn how to do some of these pieces. They're going to ask you questions. Oh, how many turns is it going to take to get your pawn there? Like, uh, can the black, the black king stop him? Um, you know, what's your opponent's plan? Like, says, uh, you're the black team. Based on the position of the white team's piece, can you tell what the white team is planning on doing? Circle the answer below to show you can how you can use a black piece to stop the white piece. You know, using castling, promoting, or making a capture. Like, what are they trying to do? Um, so some different, like, puzzles. You've learned how to do it. Now, can you implement it in different situations? And there's a bunch of different ones of these. Um, like, here it's like, well, it's a what-if puzzle. If you move your knight to the star square, is it safe? Um... So if you move your knight there, it says, Now circle a piece the knight would put in danger if it moved to the starred square. Um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. So it's, it's, you know, like, hey, if I did this, what would happen? It helps you kind of focus on that planning aspect, and there's a bunch of answers. It's also very helpful. Then the other two books are, again, aimed a little bit more at kids. We have the coloring workbook, which just has a story. 
uh, that you can color pictures to. Um, you know, definitely, you know, a neat little thing to have. And then the activity workbook, which has more basic learning stuff, uh, spelling, drawing lines, filling in blanks, things like that. Um, nothing that directly has anything to do with chess, just has chess-themed names. Um, and some of them aren't even always chess-themed. Um, so that's kind of cool. That's, uh, that's book number two. All right. Then let's look at number three quick, which is the tactics expansion. So now this one again says it requires one and two. Um, I'm not a thousand percent sure. I, the only reason I didn't understand why I would assume two is because there's probably stuff that it taught you in book two that it needs you to know for book three. Um, but yeah, kind of just picking them up. But like for pieces wise and stuff, the only thing you gain was the promoted queens, which you don't absolutely have to have. Um, but this is going to teach you some extra different things. It's going to teach you board analysis, middle game tactics, and piece point values. This gets um, a lot more strategic. Um, strategic, but it's tactical. Uh, so here we have the book. Uh, we are going to get some big old cutout pieces, though. Uh, it says what chapter they go for, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 6. We have uh, some big play pieces. They have some standees. So these sit on the board um, and actually are used in the little story things. Um, so yeah, so we have Tactics 3. So kind of look at what some of that stuff is. Just going to have some more board diagrams, asking answers, and play a game of chess. We went through all that. Um how to play all the stuff. So it's just all the supplies needed. Um, so this is again, they do kind of list on here, like, if you don't own this, can you play this? Yep, you just, you need at least a standard chess set, your standard pieces. Um, and it says instead of the crown coins or buttons, you could use something else. If you don't, if you didn't buy the first set, um, you just pick this one up. Because yeah, you already know how to move pieces. You already know basic strategy. You just want harder stuff. Um, and again, you don't have to use the cutouts at that point. So this might be more if you're just trying to teach an adult. If you could kind of skip some of the story stuff. But we have that. But there's stuff talking about capturing the king. Um, you know, like, what can you do? Like, what's your best maneuver for doing that? Um, then one thing it does in here, though, is it ups it by having you flip the board over to the standard chess side. So you're not using the story one, the grassy kid one. And you're going to move that. Um, but as pawn structure, she's showing how pawns can do different things together. Uh, castling, which is a very pop important move. Um, rank and file. Um, just starts getting into the numbers of the board. So this is where you're going to start saying, uh, you hear if you hear people play chess, they will say stuff like, I moved... Um, one from uh, A1 to 1H or 1A to 8H, um, different things. Show, you know, explaining how you moved across the board um, versus just, I went up two and left three. Um, so different stuff like that. Um, try to see what some of the other ones are. Finish strong, best move. Um, then they have another one about points. Um, so you can kind of decide what things are worth points. Um, simple chart showing the point values for each chess piece. You'll notice the king is not assigned a real, a real number. The king is tapped because your game is over regardless of counting points is no longer relevant. Um, it's going to kind of decide on one thing. So it says, uh, in chess, knight and bishop are known as minor pieces. The rook and queen are called major pieces. You'll see those terms in chapter subtitles, but it's not necessary for your child to learn them now. Uh, this is kind of just showing, like, if you have the option to capture something, obviously get the king. You win the game. But your next thing should, like, you know, it's kind of saying your next object should probably be, like, a queen, you know, over a bishop. Or a knight or a rook over a pawn. Like, you shouldn't necessarily try and capture a pawn if you can capture a higher point value piece. That's kind of what this is aiming at. Um, I think you're actually going to use some of these things. Um, or these standees, because as you're playing Tug of War, and it's kind of going through, like, what characters will have, like, the most point powers. 
Um, so this has been definitely interesting new information, stuff that, you know, I've played chess before and I didn't even really, I guess, I mean, knowing some of that stuff, but I didn't actually assign um, names or values to them. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how this works, is it goes through and does a bunch of that different stuff. Um, then they do have a list for number four, which is coming out, which is not currently out as of this notation. Um, so I don't know what's all actually in that one. Uh, but that's what's in book number three. And then we have our three workbooks. Um, so of course we're going to have our coloring book again. Just the other story with more coloring. So if you like that, the activity book with all the little puzzles. Now it doesn't look like these have really, um, gotten any stronger so it's not like oh if you did the first one like first grade this should be the second grade this should be the third grade it seems like you could teach all these like to the same kid at the same age um and then they have the puzzle book which i think is the best one to have because it gives you um different ideas of things you can do it talks about pawn promotion kitchening castling king side queen side there's some secret missions um but it actually gives you things to do with the stuff you've just learned how to do um, by asking you questions. So instead of just teaching you and telling you to do this, um, it's actually, hey, if these were set up in this specific pattern, what would you do? Um, so definitely a fun, interesting thing there. Now, again, I don't want to spoil everything in these books for everybody, but that is what we have. All right, so that was Storytime Chess. Um... Oh, that's the base game. That's set set level two and level three. Um, if you guys enjoyed these, let me know. Um, if you have questions about these games, I can try and answer them. Like, there's more specifics. But it's always fun to see what's in them. So if you're like, oh, these look kind of interesting, but what am I actually getting myself into? Because, again, they don't want to spoil too much on the websites. Um... But it's helpful to maybe just see like a video like to actually see what's in there. If there are other games that you're kind of interested in, um, you know, check out my channel. I have a lot of different stuff. Or, you know, let me look for something I can, you know, take a look at. Maybe I'll pick it up if it's, you know, reasonable. Um, and we'll try and show that off as well. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.